Good morning. And it is morning, although just in a technical sense, it's Saturday morning. Uh, when is it? The, tw the 27th, I guess? 2000 and, uh, and tw 2024. All right, Friday night, Saturday morning, it doesn't matter. Um, what I, you have, I have before you is something I'm going to, I was, I was talk, thinking, SPI, if y'all know me, you know SPI is probably my favorite war game company ever. And um, Jim Dunnigan, as far as it comes to war games, you know, I think he's, he, you know, I think he calls himself, I think he's been called, whatever, the dean of war gaming. You know, I, I call him the godfather of war gaming because he really did um, in, reinvent war games in a lot of ways, right? And, um, but SPI had a lot of strange games, as well as very good ones. And this is one of the stranger ones. It's Dallas, the television role-playing game. All right, so a little back history. A lot of y'all are going to know this. Jim Dunnigan started SPI in 1969. He, um, he learned about uh, um, war games down at uh, Army Rec Center down in Alabama. Um, and when he got out of the, when he got out of the, uh, military, he went to the New York toy show and kind of, uh, uh, uh got his way in the door of, of, uh, started talking to some Avalon Hill people, got his, in the door to do a game. And that first game I do believe was Jutland, right? Which is kind of like a miniatures game with counters, right? But he eventually opens his own, um. Uh, is the principal um, founder of SPI, Simulations Publications, Inc. And this is an SPI game. You see it right there? And um, their, their, man, their original mandate for SPI was um, historical games. Then, you know, came the 70s, and the 70s were a real popular time for war games, and they just kind of went crazy with science fiction and all these other things, and this is an attempt to call him into the role playing world. The role play they've already have already done a couple RPGs at this uh, by now, but this one um, this one comes out in 1980 at the height of the of the Who Shot Jr. craze in October of 1980s when this was released, and um, a strange game to say the least. Strange game coming from SPI. Being the hard game, hardcore war gaming company, you wouldn't, you would think that maybe you would do some RPGs, maybe um, or what you're known for a little bit, but yet it's Dallas, and it's um, SPI. This is the second licensed game. The first one was a, was uh, uh, was one from um, Star Trek RPG, and that was from Heritage Models, I think. But this one here is the second licensed game, um, and it is from 1980. And if y'all wasn't around for the Dallas craze, you just don't understand how big that was. Dallas, in many ways, was a, uh, gosh, it was big. Listen, that's something that I could, <laughs> my mother watched it in the evening, and I got wrapped up in it too. Not Time Soap Opera. Um, look, I can still name everybody. There's Jock Ewan. There's Miss Ellie. There is uh, Sue Ellen. JR's wife, or JR obviously, Pamela Ewan, Pamela Barnes Ewan, Bobby Ewan, um, which is her husband, and then there is Lucy Ewan, who was Charlene Tilton, right? <laughs> and you got, look, Cliff Barnes ain't even on there. These are just the, union, the, the, the uh, Ewan faction, right? Cliff Barnes ain't on there, and um, neither is a lot of other people. Ray Krebs ain't on there, right? The half brother of JR. But those pe folks are in the game. So, just a, just kind of an, uh, it was huge, and it did a few things well. It really, it was a show about Dallas. Before Dallas, anything with Texas or the South, the, the South in general would have been thought as, uh, you know, kind of country bumpkin, hillbilly type shows, right? You had the Dukes of Hazard, which I loved, and um, other things, but they were thought of as being kind of country bumpkin, country 
type shows, Dallas really did a good job of showing the urbanized South, right? Which um, is where I grew up. Uh, uh, not in Dallas, but in the urban South, right? So it gave a different perspective, and it gave them a pretty good perspective. You know, the money flowing through towns in, in, in the South back then, you had uh, um, a lot of cigarette executive money, uh, whiskey and bourbon money, um, and you had uh, oil money, coal money in certain plot spots, and um, you had operators, and, you know, the Ewan family is a small oil company, uh, oil, um, oil operators, which you don't really see much anymore, so it's different from conglomerates, right? Conglomerates um, really ate up everything, and they just, you know, yeah, kind of um, become Darth Vader after they become big conglomerates. Um, so it's set in Texas under a family oil company. And that did, and now that did, and you know, they got it pretty much right. You know, they have them living out on a ranch outside of Dallas, right? Where it's a lot of people, a lot of wealthy people do all across the South. Through everybody, and, and everybody has this kind of, most everybody that's this born and bred um, has this kind of a, uh, even if you're bo- born in the urban areas, you have uh, the hunting and fishing type thing. Many of us, most of us do. And that was portrayed well in the show. And if you are wealthy, a lot of times you do live on a big property out in the uh, far suburbs, if you will. So um, out in farm or something, you know, that happens all across the place. Um, so they got it really right about the, you know, urban southern show. And um, yeah, so I did like that about it. Uh, but so the game comes out <laughs> and it's a colossal failure for SPI. SPI wants to, is try, they are in debt to, um, they're in debt and they are to, to venture capitalists. And they're trying to get out of that debt and they think this will do it. It's revolutionary in a lot of ways that it um, is about not, not fantasy and it's neither about science fiction. Um, and it's also kind of revolutionary in that it's not really, it's not combat based at all, which um, kind of odd to see for back then in an old school game. That it, uh, It's not a story game, but, uh, you know, has that, I don't know, has the spirit of a story game almost, right? So um, very oddly done. Problems with it was is that um, the people that watched Dallas didn't really or play RPGs. They were really trying to break out to a broader audience, not just a, a small science fiction, fantasy, nerdy audience, if you will. And this is what you get. And um, they printed 80,000. Redmond Simonson, who was the art director of SPI, said they, they printed 79,999 too many. So, um, yeah, it's kind of funny. So we'll look at it. It's just the weirdest SPI game, one of the weirdest ones. And you got your characters. That's the thing. The game presupposes that you have a full complement of characters, which are nine characters. It's a pretty big table. Uh, so, but here's your character sheets there. They're here. And it's, even though it is an RPG and there is role play involved, but for the role play to be really involved, you need to know the show. You need to know Dallas and, and everybody's going, and if you know Dallas, everybody, everybody that's like me would want to be JR. You want to be doing, you want to be doing the, the bad stuff and whatnot. So here's the outlines. There's JR. Um, I've, obviously, I've never ran this. I would like to have a, a one shot episode, if you, if you will, of it. I would like to run that somewhere, but it would have to be, I guess you could run with four people and then the, uh, GM run uh, play the other characters. I don't know. It's kind of I don't know. I don't know how you would do it. But look here, you got. Now let's look. Let's, let's look through, through the characters. J.R. Ewan obviously going to be the first one. He is the uh, antagonist and protagonist and everything else. He can he can be that way. Jock Ewan, the founder of Ewan Oil, and J.R. is the current president of Ewan Oil. Um, Pamela Barnes Ewan she's the young bride of Bobby Ewan and Cliff Barnes who is her brother who is uh, an attorney and the, the principal 
uh, uh, villain to Jr. and um, trying to get the Ewan in trouble. And Bobby Ewan, who's the good-hearted younger brother of Jr. Ewan, Ellie, Miss Ellie, that's the wife of Jock Ewan, the, the matriarch, if you will, Sue Ellen, the former beauty queen who is uh, J.R.'s wife, and then Lucy, the young um, niece of the older brother Gary who, who you know, was in Falcon Crest, right? And then Ray Krebs, who he, at the time they don't know it, but he's the half-brother of the Ewans, and he is the uh, foreman of the South Fork Ranch and where they live, right? So there's your character, script writer. That's what they call you here. They call you a script writer instead of a... Uh, no, no, no. They call... Well, what do they call the director? They call the Games Master Director. This is the script writer's guy. This is giving you hints on how to um, make an episode, as they call it. Um, how to do an episode. you got character biographies. There's some... Wow. Well, that's kind of cool character biographies and yeah 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 okay so they, I guess we can use those as some NPCs and stuff but giving you how to understanding the rules um, it, it plays almost it's very formatted it's almost like a card game in a lot of ways right um, from how I can tell from, from reading it Again, I've not ran it. I, I think you still need to run it to understand how it how it is. Plot devices. Gosh, and I do think that sample scene there. Right here's your rules. Again, Jim Dunnigan designs this, as well as uh, her. My dog. I didn't know who that was. <laughs> Something my wife probably woke my wife up. I thought, oh man, we're in major trouble. Or I am. <laughs> uh, but um. Just a dog, um, but no, Jim Dunnigan and Austin Colonel Austin Bay um, is credited not here, but is credited later with it. And what Colonel Bay? I know he. I know he designed uh, um, Arabian Nightmare, but Colonel Bay. What in the world? I, I guess maybe he's from Texas. Maybe to get, maybe helped out with some of the uh, yeah Austin Bay right there, Austin Bay Colonel Austin Bay, um, yeah he is in there, so gosh maybe some of the Texas lore he helped out with a sequence of play it's just very structures how to play the sequence of play uh, director phase the negotiation phase and the conflict phase that's pretty much it. And it does kind of play like a, uh, you, there's negotiation involved. It's a negotiation game. And it's a, uh, you play it with the character cards and so on. Some cards there. Wow. Have some characters and different things with playing the card. The great clip. Script one. That's they're giving you some programmed. Well, I'd run one of these programmed um, modules, if you will. One of the program episodes, as they call it. I want, uh, 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 right, so, script one, cool, script two, sweet old, so they're giving, episode name, so they're giving you some program stuff so you can understand and probably, you can do these three in there, assuming you can uh, go on with it, right, episode name, script three, they give you three, three program scripts, and, um, yeah, cool. Cool. And here's the cards, which um, I believe it's a full deck of 52 cards, but you know, it's, you know, back before cards were easily produced as they are now, mass produced, right? So, yeah, yeah, you got the cards, uh, and oh gosh, that's the ad for it. How odd is that, man? It didn't. It didn't save SPI. If SPI 1982 would take a loan from TSR to pay off the venture, uh, um, the venture capitalist, and then, in two weeks later, TSR is going to call in their the loan, and they're going to take over um, SPI. 
Yeah, I think, I think by that time it was just Redmond Simonson running it, right? But um, this is the stuff I like from from from. Um, okay, here we got some. <laughs> right, and there's a strategy and tactics and moves magazine. There's your magazines for subscriptions. They're going out, and here's some. Uh, Dragon Quest, there's a good little game, Death Maze. It was Creature that Ate Sheboygan, one of the best science fiction horror games in history. Time Tripper, another odd game. It can be played as a war game or as an RPG. Um, I've wore out a couple of copies. I got a copy now, I probably need to find another one. I've wore them out. I, saw, I love playing this. Love this game. My, maybe my favorite tactical war game, even though it's pretty simple. Ever. Love this game. That's a Jim Dunnigan one, too. War of the Ring. You got a couple of odd ones on here. Empires of the Middle Ages. Great game, but just kind of, um, I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to play that again. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But that's it. That's the game. That is Dallas, the role playing game. You know, um, I would like to run it. I would like to run a uh, D6, this is what you're using here. I would like to run a game and, and do a uh, uh, do a review of it, but man, you had, uh, nine players. I'd have to be at a convention somewhere at some point, and um, don't know if you get that many people that even want to do it. But there it is. That's the first. Um, I, I, I intend to do a few more SPI games over the coming weeks. Odd ones. There are some very odd ones. This one is a very odd one, but there are some others. There are some others as well, as like. Demons, which I love that game. I'm one we might look at that. Um, War in the Ice, another weird game. Uh, and Time Tripper, quite frankly, is an odd game. I'll probably do that next because I love that so much. But it's an oddity. Uh, it's just the weird games they had. And a lot of those strategy and tactics games, let's be honest. Chicago, Chicago, that's an odd topic to, to, to use. Um, you know, so, all right. That's it. That's all I want to do. Talk to y'all a little bit about this. So, if you've played this, let me know. Um, I would like to talk to somebody. I'd like to hear from somebody that had actually played it. How did it play? How did it, how good was it? And so forth. All right. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Be careful out there. Bye-bye.